So today I'm doing another mic comparison and it's hard to get a shot where I can get both the mics in frame because that's what we're talking about. Uh, but here we are. So, you know, if there's these big mics blocking the frame, yeah, that's, that's the point. I've got a lot of stories to do, but since this is a mic comparison, I'm going to be talking to demonstrate these mics. So I'll put up on screen which mic is which. There's no post-processing. I'm going to just level match them. And I already have the preamp set about the same on my interface. So it's the same signal chain. I'm not going to use the noise gate, no EQ, no compression. Um, if you do hear my computer fans, that's normal. And this is, uh, this is the room I record in that's in all my videos. But I usually have a noise gate on, so um, you may not hear that. Here, you may notice it. But they're as quiet as I can get them. So anyways, it's not a laboratory test. This is a real world test in my own studio, so here we are. So about a month ago, I was reviewing the Stellar X2 from TechZone Audio Products, and I noted that it's a bit like a modded mic because they take a, a pretty generic housing and they put in a new circuit and their own capsule, and so it's nice parts in kind of a cheap body, which is what a lot of mic mods are. So I decided I would modify my own mic here. This is the MXL 990. Many of you know it. It's not an expensive mic, though they are certainly rugged, and uh, they're not bad. They're not a bad value for what they are. I mean, they, they go for around 60 to $80, depending on if you get with the shock mount or not. Um, so I have this, and I was also trying to modify the 991s I have, which are sort of in this series as well. One of the key differences between any condenser microphone is going to be the capsule the type and the size. And these are both large diaphragms now. The MXL 990 is originally a small or medium diaphragm microphone, and I put in a large diaphragm capsule. This here is the K47, while the Stellar X2 has a K67. Now, obviously different manufacturers are going to have slightly different tolerances on those capsules, but by and large, the capsule design dictates how it sounds. And so that's going to be the main difference between these two mics. Yes, they do have a different circuit, different housing, and the capsules are manufactured by different people. But uh, one of the main key points between them is going to be the capsules. That's going to determine some of a lot of their tone quality, their EQ. So the K67 is going to be brighter and uh a more extended top end, a more neutral upper mid area, whereas the K47 is going to be a little more accentuated in the upper mids around five or six K with a bigger roll off after that. Interestingly enough too, the Stellar X2 has a vintage edition, which is a little more expensive, uh, but as far as I can tell, the only difference between this X2 regular one and the vintage one is that this has a K67 and the Vintage has a K47. So my modded 990 is probably going to be somewhat similar, pretty close, most likely, to what the Stellar X2 Vintage is like. If you look at most budget microphones, even those that come in a large diaphragm body that look like large diaphragm mics and sometimes are mistakenly labeled as such, uh, pretty much anything I, I saw under $200 right now, for the most part, there are some exceptions, but most of them are actually small diaphragm or medium diaphragm because a large diaphragm capsule is more expensive to manufacture. Um, they're just more materials, uh, more difficult to make. So the MXL all have the same small uh, it's about 22 millimeter capsule, I think. It's not bad, but it's uh, not a large diaphragm. And it's in fact the same capsule as the 991, which is sort of its partner microphone, um, but they have different bodies. The 991 is certainly a small diaphragm pencil type condenser. This one looks like a large diaphragm, but it's not. But you can easily fit a large diaphragm in here, as I've done. Modding a microphone isn't necessarily all that difficult. It depends on what you want to do. Swapping out capsules is a fairly simple procedure, as long as you know how to solder and um, you're careful. But uh, in this case, I ordered a used K87 style capsule, which is 
even brighter than either of these. Um, but it was the only one I could find used on reverb and I wanted to save a few bucks. So I got a used capsule and it just didn't work. I'm not sure if it was a manufacturing problem or the previous owner had damaged it. Uh, it did pick up sound. So I was able to get it to make sound, but it was really microphonic. And like if I tapped the microphone, it wasn't just like a dull thud. It was a real ringy kind of odd sound. And the noise floor was terrible. It was worse than the original capsule, which is one reason I want to upgrade this one because the noise floor on the stock 990 isn't amazing and the X2 is a lot better. So I wanted to upgrade this one so it could sort of hang with the other one. So that capsule was just kind of a dud. The noise floor was too high. It didn't sound good. It was worse than the stock capsule. And I tried putting back in the stock capsule and that everything worked then. So it wasn't that I had somehow messed up the circuitry or wired it wrong. It was just an issue with the capsule. I reached out to Joshua over at Dockman Audio who uh, sells those capsules. It was um, branded under the Dockman Audio. I think they're imports, um, but he does uh, quality control and testing and whatnot of them. Anyways, this was a used Dockman Audio capsule and it, it, it didn't work. And he had no reason to warranty it because I bought it secondhand off uh, Reverb. But he did. Um, he sent me a couple of K47 style capsules, which was really nice because, you know, he, he didn't have to do that. Um, I was just looking for some, some help, but he had a few laying around that were kind of a missed shipment that he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to sell them anyways. So uh, he sent me two of those and uh, that was great. I put it in the mic and it works and you can hear it. Uh, it sounds great. The noise floor is, I don't I mean the circuit is the same as it was. Um, so the circuit noise floor is going to be the same, the self noise of that, but the more sensitive large diaphragm capsule means you have greater signal to noise ratio. So the noise floor is effectively less. So that was fantastic. That solved my problem. Um, the other side of, of that story is the infamous capacitor mod, which if you don't know anything about modifying microphones, you don't know, but if you have looked into modifying microphones, you, you do know probably what that is. And there's a number of people that sell them uh, capacitor mod kits. I don't have any beef with them, except that they don't do anything. And a number of people have explained that. They're not particularly expensive, but I didn't know that at the time. I saw mic mod, $10, solder in a couple of capacitors, and it'll make your mic sound better. So I said, okay, great. I ordered three sets of them, one for this and uh, two for my two 991s. And I put them all in. Uh, they were easy enough to do, kind of a fun project, but they don't do anything. And um, you can see or hear from my test audio here, while they don't null out completely, that's probably because maybe the mic got bumped or something. I was very careful in trying to test them. So it's as, as analytic as I could get. And I used a looper on the same speaker. I didn't move the speaker. I didn't move the microphone, of course. So I just did the mod, put it back in the stand exactly where it was. And uh, no difference, no difference. Even, even assuming some amount of error and imperfection on my part, uh, there's really no audible difference and they null out almost completely. So don't do that. Um, they're cheap, sure. I mean, if you want some soldering practice, but I would, I would say there's other things to spend your money on, and the capacitors just don't make a difference. Um, there's other aspects of a circuit, the design, the type of components used, that do matter. But swapping out a couple of caps isn't gonna magically make your mic sound way better or different. 
at all. <laughs> it's just not going to do anything unless you happen to need replacement caps and uh, these have a low failure rate. Well, that was part of the story. <laughs> it goes on because I had to, I decided I was going to repaint these um, because I was modifying them and I wanted them to be unique. So I went through the whole work of masking them and spray painting them and doing, doing custom graphics with my acrylic pens and uh, it was an easy enough job, you know, it's time consuming, but just the normal kind of spray painting and, and whatnot that I'm used to doing. That was all well and good, um, but in taking apart the 991s, um, they have these very tiny flathead screws. The only screwdrivers I have to get them out were so thin themselves that they were like bending my screwdrivers and they were a pain. So I got I got them out of one mic, and then the other one, I I was just frustrated, so I took a drill bit, and I just, I drilled out the holes to get rid of the screws completely, so I could take apart the mic, so I could do the mods. I drilled out the holes on this mic, and so I needed a way to put them back together, and so I figured super glue was a great idea, right? Um, the only issue with that is that the, the mic body, it needs to have the metal on metal connection. He's have an electrical connection for grounding. And if it doesn't, it's going to sound very bad. It's going to be a noisy ground loop mess of just feedback and noise. It's terrible. So I had everything done. I had my paint job all nice. Final touch, just glue them back together. It's going to work fine, right? Well, I super glued them back together and I went to test them. And of course they have this terrible ground loop issue. And I had tested them before um, without them being glued together. And so I knew they worked. Um, so it was my super glue. And I kind of, I kind of half thought about it, but I didn't really take it seriously enough, I guess. Well, it turns out it does matter a lot. <laughs> so I had to break the super glue bond on a metal tube, which is uh, difficult to get a grip on and difficult to rip apart. It was really in there, and I used quite a bit of super glue, so it'd be a super tight bond, because I figured I will never open these up again. There's no point. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, yeah, it was just a really bad idea, because <laughs> I had to rip them both open, and it was, you know, it took an hour or more to get them both open, and I tried everything. I tried some heat. I tried super glue remover. I had pliers and... I was whacking them with rubber mallets. I mean, I, I, the second one was so hard to get apart that I said I would rather that I destroy this mic in the process than be defeated by this super glue bond because it's useless right now. So I have to get it open. And, you know, if I have to destroy this microphone to get it open, then, okay, I'm down one microphone. But I didn't. And I, I will give it to the MXL 991s for being tough as hell because I was ripping this thing apart with pliers, with solvents, with hammers. Um, at one point I made the kind of stupid idea of taking off the, the top of it where the capsule is and putting in a fitting and trying to tap it out the bottom. Well, of course there's this plastic piece in there that is in, very important for the diaphragm to work and I kind of bent it a little bit, but I fixed it. I fixed all of it. Uh, and in the end, you know, with a little bit of tweaking and, and playing around testing things, I got them back to normal. I got them sounding just like they should uh, right out of the box, as far as I know. I mean, they both sound identical to each other, and they both don't have any major performance issues, so they're working. Um, so it is testament to the fact that they can really quite literally survive a beating and then some, and you know, if you're patient, <laughs> you can get them working again. So that was, that was an ordeal. And that was a painful process and a completely pointless one. All of it. I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have really bothered painting them. I shouldn't have modded them. I should have just left them as is, but that's something you learn when you do your own DIY projects. So lesson learned don't do capacitor mods and don't disassemble your mics if you don't need to. And certainly don't super glue them back together at the important joints where they need electrical conductivity. But in the end, I have these mics done. I didn't break anything permanently. <laughs> 
And um, with the new capsule in the 990, it sounds quite good, I think. It's, um, it's a different sound, which is nice because I have two different flavors here. The X2 is definitely perhaps a, a brighter and more neutral sound. The 990 uh, may do better on a lot of other sources. And I've got to run some tests um, because this is already going to be long. I think I'll probably do some audio tests maybe separately in a separate video. But I need to see how these sound on guitar too. And I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of condensers on electric guitar. Um, acoustic guitar, absolutely. So I'm gonna test out both though and see. I thought the X2 sounded okay on the electric. Um, though, you know, my testing wasn't that great either because I had the, the amp too quiet and there was a lot of string noise in, in that video. So I need to do a little better test rig on that and um, an acoustic test. So I suppose I'll, I'll get to that and put out that video as well. But anyways, I don't know, this is a, a long-winded rant, um, I guess, about my own <laughs> problems, about creating my own problems and then fixing them. But I do wanna thank uh, Joshua from Document Audio for sending me these capsules for free. He didn't have to, I didn't tell him I was making a YouTube video or I was gonna be reviewing it or anything. Um, you know, I just at, reached out for help and he was nice and it solved my problem. So that's great. Um, I also want to thank, uh, Matthew McGlynn of mikeparts.com. I reached out to him as well and he uh, gave me a bunch of advice and feedback on stuff. Um, so thanks to Matt and, uh, also some of the other DIY microphone builders on, on Facebook that I reached out to and bugged for help, <laughs> but, uh, problem solved. I mean... Really diagnosing it was confounding, but the answer was it was just a bad capsule. So that wraps it up for this one. Uh, hopefully this has been entertaining and hopefully you have a, a sense of how these mics sound and which one you perhaps like better. Uh, but it's not better or worse, they're just different and they have different applications in different scenarios where one may be better than the other. So we'll have to do that with some other instruments too and, and see how that all plays out. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you in the next video.